Banana Republic is going back to its safari roots. Why isn't there more outrage about this? For years, Banana Republic had been known for its professional clothing that people used to wear to the office. But then, two years ago, the brand decided to completely overhaul its aesthetic and go back to its origins as a company. But here's the problem. The brand's origin story is more than a little problematic. Let's start with the name Banana Republic. When I was working on this story, I spoke to Dario Urecki, who is a leading scholar of Banana Republics and is a professor at Trinity College. He told me that the term Banana Republic continues to be deeply offensive to people from Latin America because the term was originally used by white people to disparage their countries. So not a great name for a brand. When Banana Republic first launched, it was described as a travel and safari brand. Its stores were meant to feel like you were on a safari in Africa. There were enormous animal tusks and even jeeps inside the store so that you would really feel like you were a tourist in one of these countries. Now, what's wrong with safari clothing? When you really think about it, these garments were originally worn by British people in their colonies in Africa and in South Asia. And when I spoke to the deputy director of the museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology, she pointed out that wearing safari clothing is a slap in the face to people of African and Asian descent because their ancestors would have seen these clothes and known that they were an emblem of exploitation. As somebody who actually grew up in Malaysia and Singapore, which were colonies of the British, I spent a lot of time looking at pictures of British people wearing clothes very similar to those seen at Banana Republic and knew that these were people who ruled over my ancestors and uh, stole a lot of natural resources from my country. So I personally find these garments pretty offensive and I think it's kind of weird that a brand in the 21st century is making clothes that is deliberately meant to invoke this aesthetic. So think about brands like Uncle Ben's or Aunt Jemima that have totally changed their names because those names were really offensive to people of color. To me, it's kind of weird that a brand like Banana Republic would actually choose to go back to an origin story that is so offensive to so many people. So now, when you visit a Banana Republic store, you're gonna see racks of clothing that is all inspired by safari wear. So we're talking utility vests, expedition blazers, cargo pants, the full shebang. Inside the stores, you're gonna see lots of imagery designed to invoke this history of exploration and a colonization. Stepping into a Banana Republic store can feel a little uncomfortable to me. But what about you? What do you think of Banana Republic's big rebranding experience? Let us know in the comments.